Taking on a legacy franchise as a movie director is an undertaking fraught with unique challenges, many of which stem from the often unrealistic and conflicting expectations placed upon the filmmaker. Legacy franchises, whether they be long-standing series like Star Wars, James Bond, or modern classics like Harry Potter and The Lord of the Rings, carry with them a significant cultural and emotional weight. The characters, stories, and words of these franchises have become ingrained in the hearts and minds of audiences over decades. As a result, any director stepping into the helm is not just creating a film, they are stewarding a piece of cultural history. The unfairness of the expectations surrounding such projects can be dissected into several key areas. The burden of fan expectations, the challenge of balancing innovation with tradition, and the pressure of commercial success. One of the most daunting aspects of directing a franchise is the weight of the fan expectations. The fans of these franchises often have a deep personal connection to the material, which can lead to intense scrutiny of any new installment. Expectations might include a new film to mirror the original tone, style, and even plot, leading to criticism of the director for any deviation from these expectations. Ryan Johnson's Star Wars The Last Jedi faced significant backlash from certain segments of the fan base for its bold narrative choices that subverted the established tropes of the franchise. Some praised Ryan Johnson for this, while others felt betrayed by what they saw as a departure from the traditional Star Wars formula. These franchises often come with a rich lore and established narrative convention, which can stifle a director's creative freedom. Some fans demand strict adherence to the original material. Others expect the director to bring something new to the table. This creates a paradox where the director is expected to innovate without altering the essence of the franchise. Peter Jackson's The Hobbit trilogy, for example, was criticised for both deviating from the simpler, more whimsical tone of J.R.R. Tolkien's original book and for not living up to the high standards set by the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Jackson was caught between the expectations of staying true to the source material and expanding the story to fit the epic scale that fans had come to expect from the Middle Earth saga. This illustrates the inherent unfairness of being judged against the legacy itself. Any creative decisions made by the director are scrutinized through the lens of past successes, which often leads to a no-win situation. Beyond fan expectations, directors of legacy franchises also face immense commercial pressure. These films are often seen as a guaranteed box office formula, leading to high financial yields. The director must navigate the demands of creating a film that not only satisfies fans, but also appeals to a broader audience, often under the constraints of tight budgets and deadlines. The commercial failure of a legacy film can lead to harsh judgment of the director's work, even if the film itself was a creative success. And that brings us neatly to the Alien franchise. Alien Romulus seems to be the seventh installment of the series, but chronologically the second, taking place sometime after the events on the Nostromo ship and the discovery of the Prometheus. The Alien franchise, since its inception in 1979, with Ridley Scott's groundbreaking sci-fi horror film, has become one of the most iconic series in cinema history, known for its intense atmosphere, revolutionary creature design by H.R. Geiger, and a strong, complex female protagonist in Ellen Ripley. Alien set a high bar for both horror and science fiction. Over the decades, the franchise has seen numerous sequels, prequels, and spin-offs, each with varying degrees of critical and commercial success. With the announcement of the new installment, Alien Romulus, the conversation around the unfair expectations placed on directors of legacy franchises becomes particularly relevant. Following the success of Ridley Scott's original movie, James Cameron's Aliens in 1986 took the franchise in a more action-orientated direction, which was widely praised and cemented the series as a genre-defining saga. However, subsequent films such as David Fincher's Alien 3 in 1992 and Jean-Pierre Jeunet's Alien Resurrection in 97 faced significant backlash from fans and critics alike for deviating from the tone and narrative choices of their predecessors. The history underscores the dilemma facing any director stepping into the alien universe, balancing respect for the franchise's storied past while attempting to innovate and offer something new. Alien Romulus is a particularly interesting case study in the challenges of directing a legacy franchise. Directed by Fede Alvarez, known for his work on The Evil Dead and Don't Breathe, this new installment promises to bring a fresh perspective to the alien saga. However, Alvarez is likely to face the same scrutiny that has followed previous directors who have taken on the franchise. Fans 
audience have long been divided on what they want from an alien movie. Some prefer the slow burn horror and claustrophobic tensions of the original film, while others appreciate the more action oriented approach seen in Aliens. Moreover, the recent entries in the franchise, such as Prometheus in 2012 and Alien Covenant in 2017, both directed by Ridley Scott, have further complicated fans' expectations. These films delved deeper into the mythology of the Xenomorphs and the origins of the universe, but they also sparked debate among fans over the direction of the series. Prometheus in particular was criticised for its philosophical tone and lack of direct connection to the original Alien. There was even a scene at the very end where the Alien is shown, but this, by all accounts, had been tacked on later and not approved by Ridley Scott himself. With Alien Romulus, Alvarez is stepping into a franchise where the fan base is not only deeply passionate but also divided over what constitutes a true Alien film. He is expected to honour the legacy of the franchise while also delivering a fresh compelling narrative that can stand on its own. Critics have both panned and lauded the film in equal measure. Empire Magazine has gone on the record as naming the installment as officially being the third best film in the franchise. This again is highly unfair. If you take a look at a movie from Jean-Pierre Jeunet, 1997's Alien Resurrection, there was plenty innovation and ingenuity on Jean-Pierre Jeunet's part. He brought much originality to the series, giving multiple aliens confined to one ship even having underwater sequences. Alvarez's work, for his part, suggests that he might bring a grittier, more visceral edge to the alien universe, which could resonate well to the fans who favour the horror elements of the story. However, there is always the risk that his interpretation could be seen as too much of a departure from the established lore. The unfairness again here lies in the fact that no matter what creative choices Alvarez makes, there will be likely segments of the audience who feel that the installment either didn't do enough to honour the legacy or went too far in trying to innovate. In taking on Alien Romulus, Fede Alvarez is stepping into a cinematic minefield where the expectations of fans, critics and the studios create a set of conditions and constraints that are inherently unfair. The situation highlights the broader issue facing directors of legacy franchises, the impossible task of pleasing all parties in a world where the stakes, both emotionally and financially, are extraordinarily high. What seems incredibly unfair is that no matter how you view a movie with a fresh outlook with six predecessors, you will never be able to eradicate the tone, flavour and residue of the previous instalments. What Alvarez is up against in this case is the inability of any critic or audience to view the film through any lens other than legacy. This contaminates any fair discourse. It seems to be a given that aliens and the original Alien movie jostle for the top spot in terms of lore and the canon of the franchise. Do we ultimately then discard Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection? Do we throw aside Prometheus and Alien Covenant? It is very difficult to see Romulus as a standalone movie. Even if we could and the previous Alien films did not exist, the world of sci-fi has gone over these tropes ad nauseum. Given the weight of expectation that rests on the shoulders of a movie like Romulus, it is inherently unfair and simultaneously unavoidable to judge the movie through the lens of his predecessors. Both Ridley Scott and James Cameron fashioned movies that were about a given scenario, a group of scientists or mercenaries stranded on a distant planet or spacecraft, finding themselves in a horrific predicament, trying to ward off and survive a predatorial alien species that may or may not have been the result of a bio biological weapons warfare experiment. Both Alien and Aliens, respectively, are deemed to be the top two films of the franchise, and with good reason. Alien 3, however, came along in the early 90s, and while there was an appetite for another Alien movie, there was little impetus or inspiration to carry the story forward in a way that could in any way touched the previous two installments. There was no queue of directors lining up to direct Alien 3. The script and early production had already been troublesome, and first-time feature director David Fincher was allowed to helm the project. Having been an accomplished music video director for over a decade, his first foray, as it would turn out, was somewhat of a poison chalice. With budget constraints and studio interference, and a problematic development process, the film never amounted to the sum of its parts. Fincher departed the project and refused to be part of the final cut, and subsequently disowns the film to this day. In 1998, Jean-Pierre Jeunet took the already well-used premise of a motley crew stranded on a ship somewhere, albeit in space, and used his 
considerable ingenuity to create some entertaining sequences which took the violence and horrific aspects of Alien to a new level, while also tapping into his own sense of wonder in the science fiction world. Subsequent sequels were not forthcoming for a long while, despite the Alien itself making brief appearances in crossover movies with the Predator character in the Alien vs. Predator movies. It wasn't until the 2010s that Ridley Scott took an interest in developing Prometheus. This project would be a prequel of sorts, and in Scott's own words, shared some DNA with the original Alien movies. It aimed to give some backstory to the Wayland Industries and their bioweapons division, including the development of human-like androids. The subsequent film was met with mixed reviews from critics and fans, some being unsatisfied with the lack of Alien in the movie. The commercial success, however, spawned a new movie named Alien Covenant, and this movie went on to be much more of an alien movie, allowing Scott to use CGI techniques that were unavailable to him in the late 70s and early 80s. However, this did not make it a superior movie. Enter Fede Alvarez, a Uruguayan director who was already accomplished in the genre of horror and thriller. Having done solid work on reviving the Evil Dead franchise and writing for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and attempting to revive the English-speaking canon of the Millennium series by Stieg Larsson, continued by David Lagerkrantz. Of course, taking on a legacy project can be hit and miss. It could be argued that you are guaranteed to please pretty much no one, and at this point it may come down to box office success whether the series is further developed or not. There are lots of good elements to this film. There is budget, there is upcoming stars, Kylie Spini being one of them. There is a solid and innovative director, but the well-worn path of the sci-fi horror genre and the weight of expectations will ultimately make or break this installment. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for notifications. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.